Good afternoon. Thank you, Mayor Scott and State's Attorney Bates for joining me here today. We're here to talk about two very brutal murders we had occur in our city yesterday. Mr. Rashid Maxwell, a 15-year-old young man, had his life taken by gunfire, and Ms. Um, Pava Lapeer was discovered yesterday. She had been murdered as well. Um, we're here to announce that we have a warrant issued for the killing of Ms. Lapeer. Um, today, in consultation with the state's attorney's office, 32-year-old Jason Dean Billingsley of Baltimore it was wanted for first-degree murder, assault, reckless endangerment, as well as additional charges. Our special investigation section and homicide unit have been working aggressively to identify the suspect responsible for this tragic incident. Our Warrant Apprehension Task Force, alongside the U.S. Marshals Capital Area Fugitive Task Force, is actively working to apprehend Billingsley. At this time, we believe and we know he probably is armed and dangerous. We ask anyone who may have seen him or knows him or knows his whereabouts to contact police immediately by calling 911. We implore residents to be aware of your surroundings at all times. This individual will kill and he will rape. He will do anything he can um, to cause harm. So please be aware of your surroundings. Our thoughts and prayers are with the loved ones of Ms. LaPierre, as well as Mr. Maxwell and our community. At this time, I'll turn it over to Mayor Scott to say a few words. Thank you, uh, Mr. Commissioner. And it's uh, really uh, difficult to express the sorrow uh, that I have standing before you today. Uh, both of these murders are, are horrific, senseless, and deeply tragic. Uh, Pava was a very young, talented, devoted Baltimorean, uh, someone that I had the opportunity to get to know over the past few years who would help anybody that she would see. And to have uh, that life cut short uh, by someone who has no care about anything other than harming people is something that should sit deep in the stomachs of all Baltimoreans tonight. Uh, our city, as you heard uh, from an LBPD, will not rest until we have him into custody. Uh, we are working with every law enforcement partner uh, to, that we have to make sure that we bring this individual, who quite frankly shouldn't have been out on the streets in the first place, uh, into custody and allow uh, the BPD to turn him over to the state's attorney in the justice system. We want anybody that knows this individual, his whereabouts, to share that with us right now because as you heard from the commissioner this person is extremely dangerous we will not rest until justice is served that goes for this this case along with the case of young Rashid Maxwell who was gunned down in West Baltimore another young life cut too short so anybody that knows anything about any of these instances please let us know our BPD investigators pour everything that they have into each and every investigation that they do, but we're always going to need the community to help us. Uh, I've had the opportunity to speak uh, with Pava's family and uh, uh, Mr. Maxwell's family, and Pava's family is asking uh, that the media and everyone just give them the space uh, to not reach out to them to allow them to reach out to you in due time as they are dealing with the loss of a loved one. And we want you to uh, extend that to Mr. Maxwell's family as well. I want to continue to say that these types of tragedies serve as a call to action for all of us to do more for our city, to make sure that we're building the better, safer Baltimore that we all want, demand, and will continue to strive for each and every day. And with that, I'll turn it over to our state's attorney. Thank you. Good afternoon and thank you, Mayor Scott, for the kind introduction. As you all know, this will be an open and pending case, so there's nothing that I or actually anyone up here can really say or talk about this case. <clears throat> but the facts as they present themselves currently make this imperative for us to be alert and to alert the public about what's going on. It's important that we also understand that the families of the victims need our prayers, need to have the opportunity to be able to grieve. And my thoughts and prayers and our thoughts and prayers are with them. Our number one goal here is to keep everyone in Baltimore safe. I will always show up and stand with my public safety partners. Our goal is to work together as a team to, individual, to make sure individuals are held accountable, 
that we're not only they're going to be arrested, but we're looking to prosecute and hold them accountable. At the end of the day, we must work together to put a safer Baltimore for all. Thank you. Now, Commissioner. Um, We'll take a few questions, like I mentioned, one per outlet with a follow-up, so everyone can come up to the mic. Make sure you say your name and your outlet. Tommy Clark with Channel 11. When it comes to LaPere's case, um, it appears that it was her apartment that she was in. Are you able to say at all, you know, was this her business as well, where she was? Any descriptors to inform us? about what this place was where she was at. It appears it was her apartment, but any, th any other details you can share there? Um, the only thing I can say, it was, a, it was a secure building where someone had to allow the individual in the, house, in the building. Okay, and my one follow-up, I did want to ask, um, you said that this individual will harm, will rape. Can you say at all what happened in this incident? All we know right now is blunt force trauma. We cannot, but I, from his experience and his background, that's, the right part. Okay, got it. Thank you. Mackenzie Frost from Fox 45. Um, looking at the timeline of this, I understand that the um, Pava was reported missing. Is that, can you explain the timeline of when she was reported missing and who may have made that report? We're still investigating that, but it was, she was found not long after she was reported missing from what from the information I have. And I understand that there's been some confusion about perhaps, did investigators go up to the roof at all during this investigation or was she found inside her apartment itself? I can't tell you that right now. It's still under investigation. Janae Wright, WMAR2 News. Um, I was interested in, I know you guys elaborated a bit on his past, but is there any detail you can give about priors, maybe prior arrests or anything that might paint a clearer picture as to uh, what we're dealing with? Basically, um, this is an individual that had a conviction for a violent crime back in 2011, and he was received a sentence of 30 years to spend all but 14, and he was uh, paroled looks like October of 2022. And the charges and counts, one of which was uh, attempt rape um, and those types of felonies. So he's an individual who we would view as a repeat violent offender. And my follow-up question would be more about Maxwell. I mean, we mentioned both here today that we're uh, investigating both cases. Do we have any potential leads on suspects or any other details you can give us about his case? Our homicide detectives are work, working extremely hard with that case, too. It was a, a brutal murder of a 15-year-old young man. Um, they have some good information, and I'm pretty confident we're going to close that case, too. Okay. Hi, uh, Kelsey with Channel 13. Um, is, is the man wanted, um, or in this picture, wanted at all in any other situations or incidents that recently happened in the city, maybe like a fire that happened on Edmondson Avenue? We're still looking into that case, but he is a suspect in at least one other case. Okay, and do you believe that he's still in Baltimore? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Phil from uh, WBAL Radio. Mayor, you said that he should have never been out in the first place, um, and State's Attorney Ivan Bates talked about the repeat violent offender situation here. How frustrated are you that yet we have another murder in Baltimore? where this is a case of a repeat violent offender who's committed an act. Extremely um, frustrated. I mean, you and I talk about this, unfortunately, all too often, right? When myself, the police commissioner, the state's attorney, we have to uh, stand up here and talk about someone's life cut down short by someone who should still be in prison, right? And this is why you consistently hear from us, uh, those who are on the front lines of this work, those who have to talk with those grieving families to get other parts of the system to understand the human side of it, that these, these cases impact people's lives for the eternity. Uh, Pava's family is going to be dealing with the tragedy and the trauma of their loss for the rest of their lives. And that's where the frustration comes in. Because when uh, the police go out and do their job, as they did in this case, right, with, with this individual, I won't even give them the pleasure of calling him a man, with this individual, and then the state's attorney goes out, does their work, gets the conviction, 
The conviction should be the conviction. And we have to make sure that folks are held accountable in every single way because we are tired of talking about the same people committing the same kind of crimes over and over again. So, so did he slip through the cracks? Well, we don't, we don't, I can't tell you whether he slipped through the cracks or not. I think that uh, you are a fine journalist, sir. What I, would, what I would task you with doing is going through and looking at, that, looking at that case, as I know you will do, and look at who made a decision to allow this person to go out uh, on parole based on the facts of those cases from the past. Because when you see them, you and every single person that lives in Baltimore and listens to WBL radio will say, there is no way in hell that he should have been on the street. Uh, Hugo Cugia with the Baltimore Banner. Uh, to be clear, he was paroled in October of last year. Uh, he hadn't violated parole, had he? Was he wanted for anything? Uh, was there a, a, an outstanding warrant? Was he wanted for anything? Uh, there was not one that we knew of. Uh, and then uh, there's, I do have a question about the apartment building, to be clear on that one, that she was found in her home, at her home? We're, we're not going to say where she was found. It was, in, it was at that address. Uh, Cassidy Jensen from the Baltimore Sun. Um, you'd earlier said that she was found shortly after the missing persons report was filed. Can you say when that report was filed? I can't really state, but it was within hours. Within hours, thank you. Yes, um, Addie Briley. It's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, NBC Nightly News. Um, did the victims at all uh, know the killer? Not that we're aware of. Okay. Do you, do we know if they were targeted for any reason? If what? I'm they sorry. They were targeted for any reason. I think that what we have to understand is that that doesn't even matter at this point. We have a young woman who had a life taken away, and we have someone that we know cowardly took that life that we're going to find and bring in. Uh, that's all that matters. The matters, what matters is that we had someone kill another person in a brutal way that we have to get off the streets before it's done again to someone else. That's all that matters today, and that's the only thing that we should be talking about, is how uh, this individual did that and how we're going to bring him in to make sure he doesn't do it to anybody else. Thank you. And, and before, we, before we end, I just have a message for Jason Billingsley. Um, if you're out there watching, hopefully you are, every single police officer in Baltimore City, the state of Maryland, as well as the U.S. Marshals are looking for you. We will find you, so I would ask you to turn yourself in to any officer or any police station because we will take you into custody eventually and then we will turn it over to the state's attorney to prosecute you to the fullest. So please turn yourself in. Thank you.